everybody. I'm uh, Pastor Greg, a uh, voice in the wilderness uh, ministries based out of Wyndham here. Today I want to do a quick study on prayer. Uh, let me get my handy dandy uh, dry erase. Pray. I don't know if you can see that. I've broken it down to to using the word pray as an anagram. And I'll write this down. There, I uh, got it right there. I use the word, I use the word pray, I use P. And this is how I do it. I uh, use the word P, praise, praise God. The letter R, repent. Ask for forgiveness for your sins. Uh, whether you know what sins you did wrong and things that you don't even realize you did because <clears throat> you go throughout your day nobody's perfect A. Ask <clears throat> now ask this is ask for others and uh, Y I use for you ask for yourself now I've uh got a few things here. The first one I want to go through is Matthew 6, verse 9. And I'm using the King James Version Bible for anybody that follows along. Matthew 6, point six verse 9. And what this is is uh, Jesus is teaching the apostles about prayer. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let's break that down a little bit. Let's take it line by line. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father. Who's our Father? God. Jesus. In heaven. That doesn't get much clearer than that, I wouldn't think. Hallowed be thy name. The you can uh, holy use the word holy maybe for that holy be thy name the holy one who resides in heaven our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name God you live in heaven and holy is your name thy kingdom come the kingdom of God thy will be done his will will be done not ours his on earth as it is in heaven. It's, uh, his will is being done in heaven as we speak. And he wants his will to be done on earth as we speak. Give us this day our daily bread. Now there's a verse in the Bible here that says, Man does not live by bread alone. He's doing the temptations of Christ. Uh, the daily bread is our spiritual food. Our, the word, you know. It's uh, give us our daily bread. Give us what we need today. It's not, you know, well, I need that new Maserati or you know, 
in my case, uh, new tires for the pickup. It's give us what we need. Give us the safety, the protection. You know, give us your word, the wisdom. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Uh, most time when I pray this, I forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our our transgressions uh, that we do against you, the Lord, and against, say, others, our neighbors, our friends, our enemies. As we forgive our debtors, we forgive them, you know, if if uh, we, we forgive those who trespass against us, God will give forgiveness to us when we trespass against others. Lead us not into temptation. The Lord will never lead you into temptation. You may be tested at times, but you won't be tempted to do evil. It's just not in God's nature. But deliver us from that evil. Take, because it's, you know, as we, as we go through life, it's a spiritual battle. And uh, to deliver us from evil, protect us, you know, give us the sword and the shield and the helmet and, the, you know, the boots and the armor, you know, against that evil. For thine is the kingdom, for thine is, this is all God's, it's not ours, it's God's. I may have a deed on this house and everything, but hey, it's still God's. He's the, he created, he's the creator, we are the creation. Thine is the kingdom and the power, the omnipotence of God is it's everywhere. It's uh that that his supreme power and the glory forever and ever. You know that's uh that that's called the Lord's Prayer in Matthew six nine. That is teaching us how to pray. Um no a lot of people have that memorized and they can rattle off la 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 but they don't take time to to think about what it means so let's uh let's go into some uh some examples of that okay we'll go to matthew 6 7 verse 7 6 and 7 this is just prior to the lord's prayer now what they're talking about is Jesus is, like I say, preaching to his apostles on how to pray. But he's giving examples, especially of the Pharisees. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into a closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth the secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for they're much speaking. What this is saying here is when you you pray you pray from the heart. It's uh, you you don't sit around a, a pole, dance around a pole, and say God say love God say. You think he's going to hear that? He's uh, no way. You know that's he's not even going to listen to you. Um, some people pray for the pride. They will pray, saying, "I am holy," so I will pray in front of everybody, and they will see that I am holy. Well, that's not going to cut it either. Um, another thing we can look at is in Matthew 14:23, importance of praying alone. Chapter 14, verse 23. And then when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was alone there. That's part of that where you're praying with God. It's from the heart. You know, he's not making a show of it. Now some keys to effective pray. We'll go to... To... Um, Mark 9.29 I'm using the King James Version here 
Mark 29, 9-29. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but the prayer and fasting. Now the verse before that, sometimes take the verse before and after. You know, just don't pick a verse and say, hey, that applies to me. You have to read, you know, broaden your scope a little bit there. And uh, so I'll start at 27, Mark 9, 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind come, come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Verse 30, And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not, and he would not that any man should know it. Now what they're talking about is uh, the apostles tried to cast the demon out and it didn't work. Now I want to go to 1 Timothy 2 verses 1 through 4. One Timothy, chapter two, verses one through one through four. Now this is the power of prayer, and Paul's writing a letter to Timothy. It's actually the first letter to Timothy. I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in the authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in the godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now that's, that's the, uh, uh, that, that is the power of prayer. They're a good example. Um, I like to think of prayer as a conversation um, between myself and Jesus, you know, and through Jesus to God. Um, it's like uh, it's like when you have a conversation. between two people. Does one person do all the talking? No, not usually if it's an effective communication. You know, I can be given a speech in front of a hundred people and they don't say nothing well. Hey, I'm the only one talking. Um, part is you have to listen. And that's why you have to pray from the heart because you're just rattling off things that you want, things you know, what you need even, but not listening, you're, you're not getting it, um, it's, you gotta, you gotta listen for his answer, now sometimes prayers, sometimes, you know, the answer may be no, I believe if you're truly a Christian and, you know, have the faith and believe in God, Jesus, and, you know, study scriptures. He hears all your prayers. But he doesn't always answer them the way you want. It's been my experience that uh, a lot of times the answer will come in forms that I had not even thought about. Or not even think about. And the, with the end result being the same and in hindsight you think, oh, that was a better way of doing it, you know. Uh, other times, it's uh, the answer is no because you know through God's plan, He He knows what's best. 
and you may be praying for something, and you may not even think it's you know material or whatever, but he he knows what's best for you. Sometimes the answer is no. People pray a lot when what I see is people pray a lot in crisis situations. You know, um, with uh, with that, you know, it's, it's always kind of a one-sided deal, you know, where you always ask and ask and ask, and, and you're never, you know, li listening, you know, he, he wants to hear you when things are going good even, you know, he wants to hear from you all, the, you know, all the time when, you know, throughout different situations in your life. Um, I like to pray when I get up in the morning, right, right away. And uh, I, I'll, I'll pray throughout the day, and even in the shower. It's like my my talk with God. And that's all it is. It's, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be, you know, richly ordained with a lot of fancy words and a lot of this and vowels. And it's just, hey, say what you feel. Uh, with that, I think we'll end this for right now, and you all take care, and God bless.